Hello, everybody. Welcome to Mindful Metal Jacket. I am Joe List, and I am sitting here in my living room in the early hours of Wednesday, June 20 something. Anyways, I'm glad you're here. I hope you're doing well. We are back. Some people are dealing with the trauma of coming back. I know it was nice to be at home and have nothing to do. Um, I'm dealing with some anxiety now. Schedule's filling up and, uh, you know, it gets a little tricky. For me, running three full-time podcasts and Patreons plus stand-up comedy and I'm working on a film, which is very exciting. Um, but that's life. That's what my therapist always says. That's life. Okay. So it's just life. And uh, I don't know about you guys. I'm grateful to be back. Full crowds at the comedy cellar, but also folk, full crowds at the uh, airport. Not as fun. But anyways, it's just life. Right? It's a good reminder. Good little mantra when you say, oh, God, I got to do laundry. I don't have any laundry. And I also have to go to the dentist. And, uh, you know, my father's fat. You just say, well, it's just life. There's no getting around it. Well, there is getting around it, but that's a tragic ending. All right. That got uh, dark. Anyways, happy you're here. Today is an exciting day. My One of my good buddies is on, Matt Wayne. If you don't know him, I feel sad for you. You should know him. Well, he's not so great with the social media, for God's sakes. We got to get an album from this guy, but he is the funniest guy I know. And uh, he also knows an extraordinary amount about rock and roll music and hockey, which are two of my passions. Introduced me to some great bands, and we always have a great time. This uh, was recorded a little while ago. He came to uh, Mohegan Sun Casino. And uh, we had a hell of a time walking around, gambling, doing some shows, recorded this podcast. And uh, it was really, really fun. So this is one of the rare episodes where we're together. I think this actually might be the first episode that's on video and we're together in the same room. Because um, when the podcast started, I wasn't doing video and then only started doing video when we started using Zoom. But anyways, this is us sitting on a couch next to each other. So if you're watching the video, maybe it's awkward. Um, but Matt is a great guy, great comedian. I think it's no Wayne in hell, Matt Wayne, no Wayne in hell on social media. Trying to get this guy to put some more stuff out there, at least an album, because he's absolutely hilarious. I love his stand-up comedy. We've done a lot of shows together. Known him a long time. Used to be drinking buds way back in the day. And uh, he's just a great guy and hilarious and has a lot of wisdom and uh it's a fun episode i think we talk a i can't remember it was like a month ago i know we talk a bit about veganism which might lose a few of you it's towards the end um but i thought he made some compelling points and it was really interesting and he has me eating less meat but still eating meat come on i'm not a pussy but um made some great points he's very wise he's very smart and uh, it was just a conversation i love i enjoy all my conversations with him and uh hopefully it's not just a good episode, but a good reminder to hit up a buddy and spend some time. Nothing is more helpful for mental health than spending time with some loved ones, having a few laughs. I went into a weird depression funk this past weekend for about three days, went down to the comedy cellar a few hours early, sat around talking with some comics, felt like a million bucks, did the same thing yesterday. And uh, to just be present with other people and it won't be long before it goes away that we're uh, no longer grateful for just the ability to see and hug people, which we should hold on to after this long nightmarish pandemic. Anyways, that's enough for me, which is something I'm going to say right before I talk more. So I just want to say, enjoy this episode. I'm glad you're listening. So many nice heartening messages from people that make this really worth doing it. It's so kind. I appreciate all the reviews leave a nice comment, watch it on YouTube, subscribe to the YouTube, subscribe to the podcast, whatever, any way you want to support. I'm really appreciative of it. And uh, here's a quote that's in my mind, an old quote that I always loved that reminds you you can begin again because the only time you fail is the last time you try. Mm -hmm. Begin again and enjoy this conversation with my dear friend, the hilarious, the wonderful, the wise Matt Wayne.
You could also just do this. Well, you can do whatever you want. We'll go up I think this is more comfortable. For an hour? What? Well, so this is something my wife criticizes me about. She says that I sit like a bouncer. And that... This is the pod, by the way. We're in. Okay. She's like, even if we're watching a film and we're enjoying it, she's like, why, you know, the, the couch has a, a back to it or the, a chair. Like, why are you always looking like you have to spring to action? But this is what I do. I'm always kind of sitting like I have to, you know. Stop it. Got some young kids drinking over here. Snapping. Stopping. Uh, does he say stop it? No, he does say stop it. But one time, uh, your buddy and my buddy, Sean Donnelly, thought it was snapping. I was hanging out with Sean, and he was like, snapping, snapping. And I said, snapping? And he's like, yeah, like snapping into action. And I was like, no, stop it, stop it. Yeah, he's a security guy. Yeah, he's a security guy. He's not snapping. I think I look horrendous. I mean, this is a thing. So I was saying this before. We've been, I've only done the show. When I started the show, <laughs> it was just audio. And now everybody says it's got to be on video. You need a yeah. video. And I, I'm an old soul. Are you an old soul? I, 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 what is, what classifies an old soul? Is that someone who like, likes silent films? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, I think you're an old soul. You're, you're not a big phone guy, which we're going to get into. Oh. I, I just thought a podcast is a podcast. Yeah, it should be like, put the gun away. What does he say in Die Hard? He's like, Hans, baby, put the gun away. This is radio, not TV. That's what I feel like. Like, Yeah. Everyone wanted to be on video, so now we're on video. But during, I started doing the video during pandemic when Zooming, this makes it pretty easy because you're just, yeah, faces are next to each other. But now we're in person together. It just feels like we're in a photo booth. And we're waiting for that countdown to come on, and we're like, getting get your pose ready. Right. It does feel a little photo booth. I always run out of faces, and then like the fifth photo is just the same as the fourth and the first. It's tough to remember what faces you have in your arsenal. I hate it. No, because we were talking about this yesterday. Like all comedy shows now have a like resident photographer, which is fine. It's nice. It's nice. It's a nice perk. But you do your set. You're you're like, I want to just hang out with my buddies. And then the photographer's like, come on, come with me. And then you go stand in front of a brick wall or something. And they're like, now go. And you're like, and like, no, no, smile. And like, I'm not a big tooth smiler. I don't like show. Like, no, me either. I like teeth. Are, uh, it's a pet I, 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 tr- I try to like, blue steel it like a little but then you don't want to look like you're an asshole or like you look like you're worried but like i don't i'm not like people who can just like effortlessly go like and look great like you get my face is just cur- i don't i don't know I, I feel exactly the same way i feel like we're very similar i get very jealous of those people i hate my teeth i hate my face i've never had a smile and i've had i remember having an experience i was at saddam hussein palace with nate bargatze doing comedy which is a whole other bag of tits Good gravy. And I remember I had an ex-girlfriend at the time and I was trying to impress her. And I took a photo and I genuinely, earnestly was like, I'm going to make a sexy face and win her back. And he showed me the photo and I was like, shoot me right in the face right now. Yeah, you're like, so nothing like sexy about this. <laughs> yeah, it's just, <laughs> it's just horrible. I mean, I, I genuinely hate myself, my face, my body. I mean, I, I do all kinds of push-ups. And- yeah, me too. I'm with you. I'm the same way. I had uh, this past year... I was exercising more, as everybody was in lockdown or whatever you want to call it. Everybody, have, I want to question that, but I want to hear the story. I don't. Know but anybody. I, I, so I'm a very, uh, I'm a very stocky fellow, fellow or fella. I don't know. Doesn't matter. But I, I'm just, I have a body type. I think that's just, I can't be skinny. In terms of like, you know, I'm, I'm never going to be like a small to medium T-shirt. You know what I mean? Like, there's just nothing I can do about it at this point. It's my body. I should accept it. I should love it. But I can't help it to the point where if I look in a mirror at home, I'm like saying to myself, like, ah, I'm so fucking fat. And I like convince myself that I'm fat all the time. And then like my wife is just like, I can't take this shit anymore. Like, you're not fat. Just was like, you need to like either see somebody or like, like figure it out what it is that you hate about your body. And So I'm working on that and I'm trying to realize that it's kind of a grass is always greener situation. Right. Whereas like smaller dudes probably wish they were a little beefier Mm -hmm. and beefier dudes wish they could, you know, 
wear whatever where you know I, I look at skinny people and i'm like if you go into a store you can just you're confident and they're gonna have something for you well here's the thing i mean i'm a i'm a thin guy i even switch skinny to thin because i i hate skinny i feel like a, a douche but my clothes look at these pants they're so short i have no pants that fit no shirts that fit it's just constantly too long too short I thought this was a choice. I thought you were doing it because, like, I do like a roll up on the jean because I like a breeze on the ankle. <laughs> you like an ankle breeze? I like an ankle breeze. I like, I like a, a break in the jean. A break? Well, what does that mean? Like a pant leg, like a break with a super pant. You know anything about pants? Obviously not. <laughs> well, when you have a break, is like when it hits the shoe and there's, it's not a straight line. It's, it's, I don't want the the pant to touch the shoe. Right, I want the pants to touch. The you skin. want the pants to touch? Okay. Yeah, well, my pants. I just look like a flood guy because you're a hip guy. You dress hip. I don't. Is that right? Hip. No one's ever said that. Thank you. Yeah, you're a hip guy. You have the hip haircut, the shaved, and the thing. No. You're a hipster, really. Oh, I hate that word, but thank you. I do too, but you, you, you know, you're vegan. You listen to records. You got the same hair. <laughs> And you live in Brooklyn. Sorry. But that's what's funny about it is like this jacket's from like H and M. It was like four dollars. <laughs> you know what I mean? Had like the same thing where people are like, "Oh, this is because I got these glasses." They're like, "He's a hipster," and I'm like, "A hipster? I'm like a I'm like an asshole." I, I say, you know, no, but language, and I hate myself. No, yeah, but there's a thing about that. You're right, and it's like I go home to Buffalo, and people are like, "You have facial hair and live in Brooklyn, therefore, you must love IPA and." have a vinyl collection and i'm like, like uh, yeah and i'm like you nailed it right it works <laughs> right yeah so it's tricky but any any anywho i want to get back to this body business yeah i'm similar and you're talking about thin guys want to be beefy like my arm i do curls all day i do push-ups all day and me I too skinny little arms and i always just look skinny and people think i have this thing going on where somehow people don't believe that i'm athletic they're like blown away if they see me. They're like, what? Or if I talk about being an athlete, people just are confused and don't like it. Like I talked about on Rogan. I was talking about how I do uh, MMA. And I have this ego thing where I tell my instructor, I'm like, let's go play baseball or basketball after this so I can show that I'm an athlete because I'm just getting my, my ass kicked. Because he doesn't believe you. Well, it's not that he doesn't believe me. He knows me. He believes me. He believes you. But you have that ego thing of like, you keep getting dominated in something. You're like, let's move on to something that we're more equal at. Yeah. Anyways, he posted a clip of me saying this, and all the comments are like, yeah, right, not an athlete. This guy's a joke. You beat his ass. Well, first off, you can't look at comments on anything. Good point. Comments are awful. They're terrible. Even like comments on your Instagram, I've noticed. People are just like shitting on everything or saying like and they think they think they're in on the joke but it's like this is just stupid it's me and it's not constructive right it's not helpful for anybody but aside from that people will go i'll go in the park and we'll throw frisbee or a football or a baseball people are like geez look at this what is it and i'm like do i i look i have per i'm perceived as like a a, a nebbish unathletic hmm. football People, I've had the people say this before. Like, I'll say them the thing. I'm like, you know, I was an athlete. And people are like, oh, yeah, Liz thinks he's an athlete. I'm like, what do you want to go play right now? I'm very good. I'm, I'm good at golf. I'm good at baseball. I was a runner. I was good at you, just turn into, you just turned into Ben Affleck from Days of Confusion. Like, what? I'll kick your fucking ass right now. They think size, no. We're digressing a lot. Sorry. That's Ben Affleck's best performance. And Sarah and I think it's yes. because that's who he is. 100p. Right. <laughs> no doubt about it. You're not going to get any arguments from me. And They're like, hey, just be an unbelievable asshole. And he's like, got it. Yeah, he nailed it. So, yeah. I love that, by the way. I'd love to have him on the show. <laughs> but anyways, the body thing, I feel the same way. And Sarah and I are similar because I'm so attracted to my wife. I jerk off thinking about her exclusively. We have sex fucking 100 times a day. But she... You are an athlete. She hates herself. And I do too. I look in the mirror and I'm like, I am the ugliest, goofiest piece of shit. I want to take each one of my teeth out yeah. one by one and shove them up my ass and cut my dick off. Yeah, that's how I feel about myself too. Minus the dick thing. I'll keep it. I like it. But yeah, I look in the mirror and I'm like, God, you're just never going to have abs. doesn't matter what you do. I could have abs. I just have to do a lot of things. I bought one of those... Uh, it was like an Instagram targeted ad. Uh, it's like a sit-up bar. It's first off, it, I hate it because it it's suction based. These suction based products, but you have to like stick it to something. 
Nothing, none of that. Never it never fucking works. So you, it's got like two like foam bars that you're supposed to like put your feet under. So then you can just like, you know, just crunch away. And it does work at times, but like eventually it pops up. And like, so, you know, my wife's in the other room, like on a Zoom call for work and she hears like, ping, and me going, fuck. Like this fucking thing doesn't work. <laughs> like, no. Suction cups never work. There's like, I, I'm sure there's like high powered super that the government has. They've got the good suction. Yeah, we got that suction. <laughs> We've got I, I, pedestrian I, suction. I lick on it. I breathe on it. But the, yeah, the suction on it. Sarah bought me the the direction, the thing you suction onto the windshield so you can put your phone to watch directions. Yeah, for less than a half a second, it's safe. You could get in a car accident fucking with that thing. Yeah, and it also said it goes sticks to any surface, and the, the people obviously in the video are just like they're like sticking it on everything. They're humping it, but it wouldn't go on a wooden floor. So I have to do it in the kitchen. I have to work out in the kitchen. Which is fun because they say abs are made in the kitchen. Oh, that's right. That's fun. Now you're like a closeted, amazingly well-read guy. I don't know about all that. I say closeted because you know you seem like you hang out. You, I feel like similar to me. By the way, I'm a pretty smart guy. I like to read. I watch a lot. But I also can be quite a meatball. I love sports. Yes. Sports nut. And I'm a sports I like nut. To swear and tell bad, dirty stories. But I like I all that. I know a lot of things about a lot of things. I guess so, yeah. I, I mean, I, we're very similar. I like to quote movies. I love films. And I've, I've read a handful of books. And, yeah, and the articles and trivia and stuff like that. But, yeah, I like sports, you know, and I can be a meatball, too. Yeah, you got a meatball quality, but you're smarter than you see, I would say. I don't know if that's a compliment, but I'll take it. It is a compliment. No, it is a compliment because ultimately you're saying that I'm smart, but you're saying at first you're like, this guy's a fucking steakhead. Well, it's a double compliment because you don't seem like uh, an intellectual fucking uh, nerd, annoying guy. Yeah, I don't want to be pretentious ever. I don't want to be like the guy who thinks he knows everything. No, you're not. No, but you're a smart guy. You're saying. Oh, thank you. Right. Thank you, Joe. Yes, I think so. I think you're smart. You're I was uh, when I was I know you hate when I say when I was a boy, you don't like me using the word boy. Boy's weird. And why is it weird? I like to say when I was a boy, it's like a fun thing to say. When I was a kid. When I was a kid. No, you got to make it your own. Well, boy, I'm going to lean back. This, this thing is about. OK, so bad. well, I'm trying to avoid my double chin. And I think if you get. Back here. Most people aren't watching this. That's true. My mom will watch it. So, really? No, she won't. Um, what were we talking about? And you were a boy. We're talking about. Oh, so, uh, so my family moved from one place in Buffalo to another suburb, different, you know, with, you know, lateral move, Buffalo suburb to Buffalo suburb in fourth grade. And when I got there, for whatever reason, I don't know what they were looking at. They're like, oh, Matthew is a smart kid we need to put him in tag. And I was like, I didn't, we didn't have that at my other school. I go, what's tag? They go, it's talented and gifted. Oh. And I was like, okay, cool. I was like, that sounds kind of fun. I go, what, what is that? They go, oh, it's like a group of, uh, you know, it's like a uh, smarter kids. They'll get together and they'll, they'll watch films. They'll read books. And at first I thought that sounded great, but then it's just more work. Right. So I remember uh, Mr. Franco was the tag teacher, by the way. And the room, the tag room was across from the classroom. And what would happen is the, the teacher would be like, all right, anyone who has to go to tag, get up and go to tag. And then, so the teacher said that one day and I lost it. I just went, ah, I'm like, I don't want to go to tag. I hate tag. I go over there, I get homework and then I miss what's going on in here. And then I said that, but I got up and I went and I went into the room and I sat down and Mr. Franco goes, well, hello, Mr. I hate tag. And like asked me if I wanted to quit it, and I quit. Oh wow! Yeah. God hates tag. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, do you think that was a good move or a bad move? Looking back, are you? It, it didn't. It didn't. You asserted yourself. Yes, I'm grateful for it because I think anytime you can allow yourself to pump the brakes on something you don't want to do is so important for your overall mental health. If something, if you're not enjoying something, and you have, to, and you feel like you're being made to do it, if someone gives you an out, you got to take that out. See, this is a tricky. Thing, though that I have to try to navigate in life we all do is that sometimes you're like am I doing the right thing or is this the wrong thing? like 
am I quitting something that would be good for me just because I'm inconvenienced and I don't want to? Or am I doing a good job of setting boundaries and asserting myself and, and, and making myself freeing up more time? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, those are, there's, that's a good distinction. And there's obviously, you know, it, it's tough to tell what's going on there. Cause there's all this kind of like, you know, rhetoric that goes with it. People always say like, the the hard choice the harder choice is often the right choice you know that kind of thing you know like the the harder road is less traveled sort of thing where it's like if something's challenging challenging you and difficult you should probably just keep doing it you know winston churchill what did he say he's like if you're going through hell keep going so maybe i should have just kept going with tag i would have met somebody we would have started a streaming service i don't know but (laughs) instead i was like yeah, instead I was like, I don't want to read Island of the Blue Dolphin. I'm out of here. Yeah, that sounds terrible. But it is, but you know what I mean though. It is a tricky thing. Like I have this in comedy a lot, which is something I talk about as a theme here. And we were talking about it recently, like a half hour ago. Where and this is what I want to get into with you because I think you're good about it. But you you have to try to remember that comedy is a job and not a life and yeah. keep it separated. And so I take a lot of not a lot of time off, but I take time off, I guess. And I go to be with family and I shut off the writing vibe and looking at my phone and try to put, that is so unbelievably important to me. But then I think, well, this is one of the reasons why I'm performing at a casino for 40 people that were barked in and not more of my crowd because I don't sure every six minutes. So it is a weird balance, but it's also important to remember that you're you. Sure. And so what you're doing is going to work for you. It's easy to look at someone else on Instagram, another comic, and be like, Jesus, this person's really killing it right now. They're, they're opening for this person. They're headlining here. Look at all the videos they're making. Why, why am I not doing that? Do I want to do that? It doesn't seem like I want to do that. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, I want the gigs, but I don't. And it, it's not, it doesn't mean that you're lazy. Like, oh, I don't want to do the work. It's just like, it just so happens that you have, you know, things that you hold valuable that other people might not or you're it's all about priorities too your priorities are just different you know yeah well again compare and despair of course too you know what the compare and despair i don't know about this well that's just a thing to remember i mean it means what it means obviously but comparing yourself with others results in despair exactly i mean it's 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 the there are times i take instagram off my phone for a week at a time right where i'm like i just can't look at it because it's like it's unhealthy there's no reason to look at it. And let, like, even if you've posted something, you're looking at it to see if people watched it and liked it. And what, is, what, why? Yeah, that's really difficult. And as we speak, we're here at a casino, Mohegan's son. And I was saying last night, the slot machine, they designed the phone apps to be the same way the slot machines are designed. And you accidentally put money in the wrong place. It was stuck there. <laughs> so we had to wait for it. So it was a, it's like a, you know, it's a slot for you to put any kind of bill in and it's, and it, well, no, to put the money in though, I'm saying, and it like, it's like a suction thing. It like sucks the money in. I managed to find the only machine in the whole fucking floor that there was a lip underneath where it sucks. And I kept jamming the 20 and it went, we could see it just sitting there and the, and so the machine didn't take it. No take. no take. So we had to wait for a guy, but while you're waiting there, I put in more money. You see where it's the phone design because you're sitting there going, well, why don't we just throw some money in here and play? Because exactly. Here, same with yeah. Phone. You're like, I could just scroll on this, have these bright colors, get those dopamines going. And it's very difficult. And I had this woman, Catherine Price on, who was amazing, who wrote this book, How to Break Up With Your Phone, which I recommend. But I have relapsed and start looking at my phone again. And a lot of it is that compare thing because you see all these people selling tickets and making all this money. So you go, how can I do that? Let me, let me post something and see if it, you know, but it's meaningless. It's meaningless. That's right. But it's hard to remember that, of course. I rem- I remind myself all the time. And I also have this thing, too, where it's I, I tell myself it's meaningless and maybe I'm not where I want to be and all that. And it, it becomes a thing where it's like, is this convenient thinking or am I being myself? Do you, know, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah, well, that's kind of what I was talking about a moment ago. You have to kind of decipher. Yeah, like, is, 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 am I, like, uh, like making peace with things? Because I'm like, well, this is just how I like to do things. I, I'm going at my own pace. That's convenient thinking. Or, you know, I lost my train of thought. 
Well, no. I mean, it, it makes sense. You're like, am I doing this because this is what I want to do, or am I doing this because I don't want to do that thing? Is that right? <clears throat> yeah. Like, I, I, I just, um, I'm getting distracted. I'm trying. I'm trying to seem too articulate here. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I have this when I go to the the gym or when I'm writing because I'm like, I want to have a new 20 minutes of killer shit. And I want to be all ripped up and 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 get a belt in MMA. Sure. But I'm like, I don't like doing that work. So I'm like, am I not doing it because I don't want to do the work, or do I really actually kind of not care about this thing? I'd rather be doing other shit. Yeah. And then also like having a life outside of comedy is like, it becomes a thing. It's like, which one are you valuing more? Right. And it's like, is it wrong to kind of prefer your life outside of comedy right is it wrong is it's because it's kind of frowned upon right so many people and i've heard this they even say it about me i've, I've heard it you know i'm not gonna name names they're like oh that guy doesn't really like come around that guy doesn't really hang out that guy doesn't really you know like yeah listen i've been doing comedy for 20 years i don't headline you know what i mean most people would spiral out of control with that information right. what am i doing with my life but I look back on it and go, well, I've been on TV. I've been in a couple films. I don't know. Like, uh, life's been pretty cool. This has been an interesting life, and it keeps getting more interesting. And why can't that be enough? Right. That is enough. If, you're, if that's enough, that's enough. There was this great quote, and I was telling you about it, um, from this actor. He's Danish. Oh, um, Mads. Mads Mikkelsen, yeah. Right. Love Mads Mikkelsen. He just did another round, such a good film, and he's been around forever. He's just like a great actor whom you've probably seen in stuff that you don't even realize. And he was talking about his approach to his career. And I think it works for anybody in the arts, whether you're a writer, singer, actor, comedian. And he was saying that he doesn't focus on his career. He doesn't care about his career. He cares about each job. Right. So every job he's doing at that time is the most important thing. Because if you set career goals, you're only going to let yourself down because you're most likely not going to reach them. And then you'll feel let down and you'll feel like you failed. But if you make every job important and you are present and you have fun and you do your best over time, big or small, you will have a career. Right. Which is a great thing to keep in mind for life as well, which we talked about just yesterday, is that it's about being in the moment. It's a very Zen thing where... Even if you're not talking about work, you can be like, well, right now I'm just changing my son's diaper. Or right now I'm just taking a shower. I don't have to figure out my whole life. I just need to make sure I'm properly washing my body and be present doing that. And we have a thing in like sober circles, you say you take an action and stay out of the result, which I think is very similar. Where you're just, you can't, you know, you do push ups and then you go look in the mirror and go, ah, do I look different? How do I look? You gotta just do. Isn't it funny how that works though? Not to get too sidetracked, but every time I do push ups, same thing. If I don't, have, if I have a shirt on, rip it off, get in front of that mirror, and go, it's working. Yeah. yeah. Or it's not working. I have that. And I have that with writing jokes too. I write and then I go back and I'm like, is any of this a bit shit? Any of it's a bit. But you. I do that too when I write a new joke. I take my shirt off and go look in the mirror. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> but that's like that's trying to get in. Then you're getting into the result. It's the same with um, doing a podcast or whatever. You're like, or, or like we talked about posting on Instagram. Yeah. You take the action, which is post, share your art, and then you got to stay out of the result. But staying in the result is going and checking who's liked it, how many people have liked it. Does that all make sense? Yeah. It's similar to what Mads is saying. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't even get the, the entire quote correct, but like the, the the basic point of it being like that when I read that, it was talk about dopamine, all kinds of receptors in my brain went off. Where I'm like, this is me. This is, I like this. Right. You know what I mean? Whereas like, and we've seen people in comedy who approach it like it's a, like they're in finance or they're an athlete and they, pew, and that's fine. That's great. They've done the work. They've put their head down and they've done everything they have to do. It's just like, and it's not to say that like we could do, I could do that. I don't want to say we, cause we're, you know, different people, <clears throat> but I just, I don't know. My approach to it is just different. And I don't know if it's for everybody and I don't, it, but, and it's very easy for someone who's higher up to be like, well, this person's that if they could hear the watch this podcast and be like, well, that just means this guy, he's a defeatist and he's not trying. You know what I mean? But to me, I'm living my life the exact way I want to. And I'm very happy about it. And you're somebody that does a lot of consuming of the acts. You listen to more music than anybody I know. You're a we live in an age where it's awesome. If you're a music fan, like Spotify, 
is incredible. I don't. I mean, I hope the artists aren't getting all screwed, but they probably are, right? I think so. But now they make more money live, which is the way it used to be way back. Then. Yeah, and it's wow. it's just amazing to me that like, if I tell you about a song or you tell me about a song, I can be like, oh, I'll just send it to you later. Right. Where it used to be like, oh, I'm at a, I am holding a CD. Someone told me this was good. I'm gonna spend fifteen ninety nine on it now, and I can't listen to it until I get home right, right. and cut my fingers on the jewel case. Yeah, I mean. So this is interesting. This is what I like about you because, or one of the many things I like about you. But by the way, this TV is way too small. You people can't see it. You know, when I walked in here, I was like, "This is the headliner room. This is beautiful." But then I saw that I had a bigger TV than you, and I was like, "I'm okay." It's great. I mean, it's all stand. You can see more of the stand than you can the TV. It's horrible. I don't even think mine's mounted on the wall. I have one that's like on the console. It's crazy. But what I was gonna say is, what I like about you is, you're. I think if you ask a thousand music lovers about the time we're living in that say this is the worst time for music it used to be so great you go to a record store and you had your big record and there was all these great bands and you're saying this is the best time to be a music fan which is amazing because you have a positive spin you you, you take in the things that are great about it and you appreciate them. yeah and it's great because like vinyl's huge now people are listening to fucking tapes now which I think is the, the the worst out of anything. Like the, the audio quality is terrible. They're fragile. The thing comes out. The fast forwarding. Fast forward. It's like, and it gets eaten. It's it's terrible. I love, I mean, if you into the, like the novelty of it, oh, I got a tape in the case, fine. But also it's also the smallest artwork. You can barely see the artwork. No, yeah. The artwork guy. Love the artwork. That's what I love about the vinyl. I mean, if you don't have a reissue and you're getting used vinyl, you're buying an artifact. Right. And then it has the story. Sometimes you get a used, also you buy you, a used record and you get home and you didn't even realize on the inside there's like a poster. Yes. Then you unfold. <laughs> yeah, it made me, it, it's exciting to, um, because there was a whole period of time, like Band of Horses is a band we both love. Sure. I don't know any of the band members' names. No. Uh, the producers, when I was a kid, the CD, I was an OCD asshole who would just consume everything. I know who produced This is the thing. Members' names, all that. That is what is commonplace now with this, period of music is i don't know the names of songs right i know oh this one i love this one if it comes on but what's the name of it i don't know that's how i with band of horses i'm like i love this band but i, I know the name of four songs because you just scream it because you yeah exactly yeah so that's the bummer but you're good at getting in there and finding new music i don't know where to look i get lost and i also end up going back to the same eight bands as i get older yeah i constantly constantly am looking for a new song that i can be obsessed with you have that song where you're like, oh, I got to hear it over and over and over again. Right. And that's what Spotify is good for. They do the Discover Weekly. It's like it's like a, a girlfriend or boyfriend making you a mix CD every week. Right. Yeah, it's pretty good. I don't use Spotify. I have Apple Music. Okay, so that's the problem. But they have a thing that's similar, but I don't know how to use it. I should get so, when I, so every time I'm sending you these Spotify tunes, I'm wasting your time or my time. because no, it plays. Oh, it plays. And then I go to Apple Music. And oh, okay, 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 okay. 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 I, okay. I would hate to be, I hate that even for a second thought i was one of these guys that you're sending stuff and i just go yeah and i can't even listen well i think this is something i get in my head about because i do this all the time where i want to if i'm experiencing something it doesn't matter what it is if it's a film if it's a tv show or, or music if i'm really loving it i want to share it with everybody Absolutely. i'll send it to my one of my sisters or my 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 either you or like anybody i'm like you, you got to see this you gotta listen to this so i do it so much though that i i get worried that someone like like, oh, what's this? Oh, Wayne sent me another fucking song. Great. Right, yeah, I'll yeah. fucking listen to that in hell. No, I got a buddy that sends so many stories that I'm like, it's too many. Like emails. Like, uh, look at this story. And I'm like, I don't even consume news this way. You're sending me too much and I feel bad. And then he'll say, did you read that thing? And I'm like, nah, I didn't read it. I don't know. I just, I just can't. But music, a song is the easiest because you just throw it on and then there it is. You get you stuck uh, Sam Coffee in the Iron Lungs up my ass, and that oh yeah, that's a, that's an album I posted on Instagram just straight up. I was like, everyone's got to hear this shit because I like to share it also. And you're doing service to the artist, I might add. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and like they just they the band just liked one of my like old posts on Instagram today, and I think it's because of you. Oh yeah, okay. So we're all doing. I mean, you got to support the artist, especially as an artist. That's another reason I appreciate it. you're an artist yourself, supporting artists, which I think is important. There's people that are in the arts, and they're like, I never heard of nothing. I don't buy an album. And they steal. I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah, they artists. It's it's a no brainer. Uh, all right, so I want to get to the let's get let's get 
down and dirty here. How did you come to be this way? You got good parents. Your parents still together? My parents are together. They've been married in June. Wow, we're very close. What is the year we're in? 2021? Wow. So June 23rd, they will have been married for 48 years. Wow. So which means in two years, we have to have a fucking big ass thing. So you're a young, you're younger than your sibling, right? Yes, but we're also like, uh, I think people call this Irish triplets. Okay. Because I'm 39. Right. And my sister is 41. And my other sister is 42. But when I turn... 40 in July, we're going to be 40, 41, 42. We're going to be like, boom, boom, boom. Right, wow. There's a period of every year where we're like, bam, 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 which means my mother was pregnant for like, you know, three years straight, which maybe is why she's just has so much resentment. I just watched uh, <laughs> one of my favorite documentaries, Ethel by Rory Kennedy. Have you watched that? No. Max, a hell of a picture. It's about <laughs> Ethel Kennedy. But she had, I think, 14. She was pregnant for like nine straight years. Yeah, I mean, that's more of an undertaking. Three is not so bad compared to that. But yeah, so. Trying to minimize it well, I'm, well, I'm trying to say maybe, you know, she shouldn't have thought it was such a big deal. Um, so is that all of you, the three of you? Three of us, yeah. And your parents are still together. They seem very supportive. Were they artists themselves? No, no, no. Uh, my mother dropped out of college. And my dad, my dad went to college, but then he, you know, he, you know, I mean, they got married young. This is like the boomers. They they just did things so they thought they had to. Right. So they were like, graduate high school, get married, or go to college, then get married. Now have kids. So like, you know, you're in your early twenties, and now you're like, what do I? I've done all the things I was supposed to do. Now I have to find a way to feed all these people. Right. Whereas now it's like, you know, I got married when I was thirty five. You know. Yeah. Same. I was. I think I was 35 also. Yeah, that's funny. Wait, was that? 34, yeah. But either way, so, uh, no, I mean, they just, they, we, it was a very, like, blue-collar, buffalo, you know, like, middle class, you know, I mean, but they weren't artists. They were just doing, you know, working. I think we're very similar people because my parents got married very young. They've been married around the same amount of time. It's really a little less. My parents are probably younger than your parents, I think. My your parents born. 50 and 51. Okay, my parents were born in 57, 59. Okay, yeah, yeah. So we have young parents. My parents are younger than yours, obviously. Yeah, my 70 and 71, so I think. Your parents are pretty normal age. Normal age. When they had the kids. Normal age when they had the kids, yeah. Mid to late 20s. Mid to late 20s. Um, yeah, but they've they've always been very supportive of of the comedy thing, as just as long as I I've never asked them for money, so. Really? Well, because they weren't going to give it to me. Right. Yeah. Same. If I had parents that gave me money, I'd be asking them all the time. Yeah. That's what's tricky is like my parents, my parents have less money than I do. They don't have any savings or any money. I have no idea what my parents have. I have no idea. I feel like sometimes I feel like they're secretly have money. They're just never going to give us. They might, my parents, my parents talk about it. My mother's kind of jokes about it, but serious. So yeah, I have no, it's like, just so you know, you're not getting any thing. Yeah, I've, I haven't expected anything from my parents at all. I feel like, I don't know, we're more like old friends or like old army buddies than like parents and kids. I call my parents Deb and Steve. You call your parents Deb and Steve? I don't call them Deb and Steve. I still call them mom and dad. I never did the, like buy the first name thing, but like, I feel like because they were working and we were also close in age, there was very like, they were very hands off. You know what I mean? Like we kind of like, we're off on our own, you know, that nowadays you would always, you would have a babysitter for like, but then back then they'd be like, okay, 10, nine, eight, the 10 year olds in charge, we're going. Yeah. It's funny because there's that term latchkey kids. And I was kind of that, like we just, I had a key on me, which is weird. Cause I, you don't want to be one of these boomery assholes. that sounds like back when I was a kid, but we did have a thing of like my sister and I, I walked home from school and walked to school and home from school. Me too. Key in my pocket. Yeah. By myself. And there were times too, my parents would, uh, they just wanted to, to hang out with each other. And they would say when at that age, you know, like 10, nine, eight, like close the front door, we would hear it lock. And they'd be like, we just want you to just go play outside. And like, we, we, we would just go outside and like we we would go and we would walk to a a candy store or like a convenience store to buy you know what I mean like yeah. by ourselves just like or by my side I get on the bike and I'm just like riding on busy streets and like 
no one, not a care in the world. No one's like, this person could be abducted. Right. It's, it, it's really interesting to think about that. And again, I don't want to get into this really no, no, no. school conversation, but it is uh, fascinating that like you would go hours without talking to your parents. And my parents, I think we grew up in similar places. I grew up in suburbs in Massachusetts, you in Buffalo. And it would just, if they needed you or dinner was ready, they would just scream from the front doorstep. Yeah. And they'd go, Dad, and then you'd have to like ride your bike home or whatever. Extra fast. Or you just knew like, hey, all right, it's about evening time. And then a lot of times too, you would just be like, well, I'm hungry now. I could, you could, first of all, when you're a kid, you eat like shit. So you're like, oh, my blood sugar is dropping. You didn't know any of the terms, but you're like, no. you're so shaky. Let me go home and get some fucking macaroni and cheese. Yeah. Did you eat like shit as a kid? Because now you're vegan. I want to get into that too. <laughs> How did you think it's weird that I keep bringing it up? But I'm- I don't think it's weird. I think, you know what? You're not the only friend of mine that does that. Like, well, a lot of people are like, oh, this plant based fucking well, asshole. I'm doing it as a bit out on the floor. I think it's funny. Out there, it's funny. Yeah, in the elevator just now, you someone was holding a Chick fil A bag, and you're like, oh, wow, well, I'm going to have some Chick fil A. Not this guy. He's a vegan. And the guy, he's not a response. He's like, that's great. <laughs> uh, but tell me about, take me through that decision because I eat like shit. I have a horrible diet. I'm always afraid I'm going to die. But I don't have the discipline to make any fucking decisions or choices. But I have improved. I have to stay. Okay. I eat less fast food, even though we had it yesterday, which was horrible. And I have a big smoothie with a ton of greens, and I eat salads and salmon and fish. Okay. Well, here's the thing. So as a plant-based person or vegan, however you want to put it, I have a. I never want to be the guy that's like an asshole about it. Like I try to like just navigate the menu not make a thing if someone's like we're getting pizza for everybody any vegetarians that's one thing because it's just oh we'll get a cheese pizza but if you're not eating cheese it's like i'm just not gonna eat the pizza i'm like i'm not hungry you know what i mean i don't want to be like no i'm vegan right right go to hell right. so how i got into it i that was like uh 2017 or so so i was like 36 i for some reason just reached a natural organic fatigue with meat where I was like, this is gross. This just looks gross. It looks like shit. You go to a deli in New York City, you're like, let me get a bacon, egg, and cheese. And you see that pile of bacon that they draw from with the spatula, and they just like sword fight with it. They sword fight with it, like blah, blah, blah. Then you throw it on a bun. Then you get outside, and you bite it, and you're like, you're like fighting with it. You're like, why am I doing this? Why am I eating this shit? And then my wife, she floated the idea first she was like i kind of might want to go vegetarian and i was like because we were both like meat eaters we did like the paleo thing like a year before where it's like you're only really eating meat and uh i was like all right that, that, i'm like that's interesting and then i was i had a day job at the time i was working at west elm weird job i was working at the photo studio where they shoot the catalog uh-huh. so i was like if there was this this couch it's like you know they they're like all right now bring it on set you bring it on set now bring it offset. You bring it offset. That's the whole job. I heard an interesting thing. I was I did my nieces. I want to get back to this in a second, obviously, but I did my nieces like had a career day thing where people, adults, come in and talk about their career to high school kids. It was pretty fun. I headlined. I didn't do a job, obviously. <laughs> but there was a photographer, and he was a uh, what do you call it? A consumer? No, something photographer. Not photographer. A digitech. Uh, a stylist consumer capitalist I, oh, I don't know but basically he was saying everything single thing you see in the room if you're listening look around it all had to be photographed at some point sure because they had to sell it it was in a catalog it had to show it to somebody so that desk that lamp the exactly there, there's a photograph somewhere of and there was someone getting it either out of a prop cage or someone getting it out of a warehouse and opening it up that was what West Elm was like, but there were these catered meals, which were disgusting. But then also, if sometimes the caterer wouldn't come, they'd be like, All right, we're gonna get Chipotle for everybody. And because it's on someone else's dime, you're not paying, you're like, Well, I'm gonna get double everything. Sure. So one time I got double the pork, and the burrito shows up, and it's just you know, those burritos are like a newborn baby. And I ate this thing, and then like awful just like i just felt unbelievably terrible and i was like just sweating on a toilet just sweating on a toilet i couldn't come out i was just just felt terrible and i was like this is not right this is not right this is not how it should be and this was right when my wife was like we should go vegetarian and then so i watched what the health which is i think such an important documentary and then i read the book eating animals and those two things 
Because here's the deal, I think. I'm going to Joe Biden you. Here's the deal. Either you want to know what's going on with factory farming or you don't. Right. Either you want to know what's happening. And if you once you educate yourself, once you open up your mind and see that, it's hard to want to eat any of that stuff. And people say all the time, like, oh, I don't have the discipline to stick with it. But it's like the peace of mind that you will have over time, knowing you're not eating animal products, is just such an unbelievable feeling that it'll be so easy to do. It's interesting though to me, because to me, my issue is always, and I have this issue even the way I eat now, I have so, and it's from my family also, and maybe it also is just lazy because I don't want to fucking, my therapist is like, you know, you just do it, you idiot. I have so little food education, even trying to eat. Well, either, and I didn't either. I went 30 plus years without any food education because, not to interrupt you, but like in in that book, Eating Animals, it's the beginning of it, it points just what you're talking about. It points that out. Like when you're a kid, your mom or dad puts the plate in front of you and you eat it. Right. You don't think about what bacon is. You don't think about what chicken is. You don't think about the farm, the animals. You look at your pet dog. That's great. But there's no difference. You might as well be eating your dog. Right. These are animals. These are sentient beings who are just getting rounded up and shot in the head with their babies taken away. It's insane to think about it. You know, and like, so once you start to think about it and you see how it's done and you see wh- how the animals are treated, they are basically pushed as far as they can be pushed without dying. But I think you're misunderstanding what I'm saying. Okay, I'm sorry. I have a little knowledge of food of like, I don't know what to eat aside from that. Like even with- Oh, food, okay. I'm like, okay, chicken parm is a meal. People are like, there's chicken marsala. I'm like, I, I don't know what that is. I don't like a mushroom. I don't like a pepper. I don't know what this is. I know six foods. Okay. So now I get it. Okay. Even with understanding I can eat meat, like aside from wanting to be a vegan or vegetarian or healthy, I have like this acid reflux thing. I'm like, all right. I'm but if you, but if you went plant-based, that would be gone in a minute. Of course. But some guy was like, all right. A, guy, a doctor was like, you should go, uh, what's this thing called? that everyone does, but you can't shit. You don't eat carbs. What's that one? Atkins? No, the fucking thing. My wife does it. Uh, glu- keto. Gluten? Keto. Oh, keto. You go keto. I try to go keto. I'm like, I don't understand how to even full, feel remotely full without a carbohydrate. I just don't. I can't. Even I mean, that, and that, that was very similar to the paleo thing where you're just like eating meat. Right. You're eating like meat and like nuts. Yeah. I'm like, I, so I can <laughs> eat nuts and fruit and a salad, I guess. Yeah. People are eating like bananas or and like bacon. <laughs> but you pull it off somehow. Because like, I'm, I'm also so dumb. I'm like, even today we were at the breakfast place. And I'm like trying to be a good friend and empathetic. So I'm like, here you go, right here. Egg, scrambled eggs with, wait, oh, eggs are fucking animals. Yeah. I'm an idiot. Well, it's, it's a hard thing. You, you've been hard programmed for so many years. It's, you can't just like, it took time. It wasn't just like, you know, I had, I stopped eating meat. And then six months later, I was in Sicily and I was like, ah, the, the animals are different here. I'm eating sausage. I'm eating fucking everything. Right. And then I got back and I was like, I can't do that. Okay, I'm all, I don't want to be that person. You know what I mean? And once in a while, still, like, I will break. You know what I mean? My wife and I, we, her, my mother-in-law has a house in the mountains in New York. So we spend some time up there like a couple times in the summer. And you go to these mountain towns, there's four restaurants. They don't have vegan stuff. So you find you eat a cheese pizza and you're like, I don't want to be doing this, but here I am. And that's the part that sucks is like, you feel like you're you're making this choice because there's, there's no other options. But most of the time, it's very easy to look at a menu and just because you can eliminate so much. Right. Well, now it's interesting because I was hearing, I was listening to a Paul McCartney interview. He was talking about being vegan in the 70s. That had to be hard. He's like, you literally, there was places, you'd go to a gas station, you're like, there's absolutely nothing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, much like so. music, it is the time to be vegan. I mean, like with Impossible Meat and Beyond Meat, <laughs> bless you. And all the there's there's everything. I mean, there's vegan sour cream. There's vegan I, the oatly. The you know I'm eating bowls of cereal now. I haven't had cereal in years, but this oatly milk is magical. Is that the same as oat milk? Yes. Okay. It, the company is called. Can you eat oat, almond milk? Yes, yes, of course. All those milks are great. You know, there's just so many products now. It's like, and it's nice to see that it's becoming somewhat normalized. Like, you know, the Very the impossible whopper, you know what I mean? I'm, they're all starting to get introduced a little bit more and people are starting to see it. And it's just, it's interesting to me too, though. Like when you're someone who doesn't eat meat, my parents do this a lot where I'm talking to them and they'll be like, well, you know, we don't really eat a lot of meat. And it's like, you don't have to say that. Right, right. And then you look in their fridge, you're like, look at this shit. You got like nine pounds of everything. 
and you're you're eating cheese as a snack, it's like you you are you're an animal product based household, and it's okay. That's what you want. You don't have to like try and you know sell it to me like you know we don't really do that. No, I have that with alcohol because people I don't obviously I'm sober and people will say hey, do you mind if I have a drink? Is it weird if I drink? And I, I don't drink too much and don't worry about this. Yeah, and is it cool if this? And can you have Pepsi? Do you, do you have a, <laughs> and all that shit. And so I get it, and I'm like, you don't have to be involved in this at all. So I can relate in that aspect of. People all the time are like, I'm so sorry. I asked if you wanted a drink. I'm a piece of shit. And I'm like, my thing has nothing to do with any of you. I mean, what it's kind of person would I be? Exactly. Like? It's the same thing. And like, this happens a lot. Like my wife is a friend like that. And she'll be like, I'm going to order the chicken. And I'm like, good, get the chicken. You know what I mean? She's like, and, but, and, and she's gotten over it. But it's like, I can watch someone eat a chicken. Sure. Don't get me wrong. In my head, I'm like, you're eating fecal soup. <laughs> like, this is disgusting, but it, it works for you. <laughs> but um yeah it's a personal thing and it people shouldn't feel like they have to change what they're doing to, when they're around you but you feel better physically mentally yes 100 percent. sleep better i cannot tell you the last time i had heartburn which i had a lot of heartburn before i don't have heartburn i sleep better i feel like i have more energy and here's the here's the thing I don't think people realize a lot, and for men especially, about eating meat. The reason why dudes can't get boners is because they have their arteries are clogged. They can't get the blood to their dick. I remember you telling me that's the canary in the coal. It, mine. it is the canary in the coal mine. So but I have boners. All, I wake up with a boner. I fuck constantly. Hey, it's great. I'm not saying it's a cro- like if you eat meat, you'll never have a boner again. I'm just saying like, really know. of course, you got the sweatpants. It's very comfortable. <laughs> But you would think that would be more motivation for people. Like your dick's going to like, I'll just take a pill. This is what people want to do now. They're like, I have heartburn. Well, I'll take a pill and then I can eat like a child. Right. Oh, my dick doesn't work. I'll take a pill and I can eat what I want and my dick will work. But you understand it's very difficult. But it, it is difficult. I totally understand how and why it's difficult. And you cannot expect everybody to just be like, well, uh, you know, I, I should do this. But I encourage people to watch What the Health and just make a choice after, like educate yourself, then make a choice because there's people who just don't want to know. Sure. Yeah. And it's just, it's hard to break habits in general, of course, especially habits we've had for habit forming years. is tough. Yeah. I mean, cause I'm like, again, especially on the road, I'm on the road a lot, which is just an unhealthy, it's hard to be healthy. It's gotten easier airports and stuff, but we're sitting here at the hotel. And after this, I already have Chick-fil-A in my mind just as I saw it. And that's another thing is corporations are so good at using their logo sure. and stuff. And, it's like Pavlovi and whatever, all the same things you talk about. But it will go away. Like, I had that. Where I, I mean, I know it will go away because I have that with drinking. Like, I, I don't eat fast food. And it's not because I'm, like, some kind of, like, you know, snooty, like, ew, fast food. I don't eat it. Like, one of those people who says, I don't watch television. I just don't eat it because there's just, even though they have vegan options. I mean, we ate Subway the other day. It's like, it's just not something I'm, like, I desire. Because I know, I know what it is. Right. It's not designed to do anything for your body. But I'm sitting here going, we're at the casino. I'm like, how am I going to eat? I want to eat something healthy. The club has Caesar salad. and. They've got nothing healthy. That that menu is a nightmare. Got a salad. You got a Caesar they got a salad. salad. I got a giant pretzel last night, Right. which is a, a vegan's friend. You get a nice giant pretzel with some mustard. That's good. Some tots. Yeah. Oh, so you can eat French fries. You can eat French fries and tots. I mean, was, I mean, you assume that things are not fried in beef tallow, but like, I think those days are over. Like, that's an expensive thing for a, a, a restaurant to keep on hand. I mean, a beef towel. That's what I put on after I go swimming. Oh. Uh, okay, very vegan heavy. I hope. I'm I didn't. I didn't. I didn't mean it to be. You want? No, I, I'm interested in it, but I think this is good stuff because this affects people's mental health. I mean, I think my diet. My diet has been so atrocious my whole life, and I want to live. I wanna and I had it. Well, I also I had. Listen, growing up in Buffalo, I had awful diet. Buffalo is a great town. I love Buffalo. It's so fun. The food is good, but like, what is the food? Chicken wings, chicken fingers, beef on weck, pizza. It's like all stuff that is just gonna clog your arteries and make you feel like shit. Right. And it's really good food when you eat it. When you're a kid, you're like, oh man, like when. You know, you got that little kid metabolism. You're like, how many chicken wings can I eat? How many of these can I shove up my fanny? Right. You know, <laughs> like it's but, just. 
I always hope now, because again, I'm, getting, I'm making this about me and my horrible diet because I get paranoid and I'm hypochondriac. But in my mind, I'm like, between meditation, exercise, green tea, and my big giant smoothies, and my uh, intermittent fasting, I feel like I'm okay. I'm I, you know, I think, yeah, I mean, and that's just how, and that's just how it is. Much like your approach to your, your, you know, your your career or anything else, you're like, it's it's your personal path and i think everything you've just listed is great you know what i mean and you seem to have a devotion to mental health this is a mental health podcast you meditate i mean you're a very aware present person which is way more than most people yes. so you know i can't sit here and go oh you need to be plant-based you need to be a vegan no one needs to do anything well, but i just think they need to consider, but the vegetarian seems like something yeah, I, did, I, I guess more so. I don't think people need to do anything. I just think people need to educate themselves. Because mm. like you were just saying, you don't know about food. Like people don't think about what they're putting in their body. They don't think about it. They don't look at the ingredients. They don't look at the calories. They just go, I like this. Yum, gone. Right. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. I got a drippy nose. I don't know what's going on. I think that's allergies. Can you, will that get rid of my allergies if I stop eating? There's, <laughs> uh, it could. I mean... You never know. I mean, you're eating what the animals are eating. You're also digesting, you know, you're a big anxiety guy. This is something else with meat people don't know about. Animals, because they're sentient beings, they know what's going on. When they're in the kill line waiting to get the bolt in the head, they're so stressed out. They're not like, do, 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 waiting to get killed. They're like, they're like, they're losing their fucking mind and then they're killed and then you're eating their stress. That stress gets, those chemicals get released into their meat and then you're eating it. You're eating that stress and it affects you. I'm sorry. I got very passionate about it. And these are the, I, these are the things people need to learn. And like, you know, the, the ag gag laws in this country. The what now? Agriculture. Oh. The ag gag laws. You're not allowed to know what goes on. And people think farm raised, right? Oh, it's farm raised. This is a farm raised. The requirements for something to be farm raised or to be uh, free range. Mm -hmm. This could be considered a free range chicken farm if we could fit as many chickens as we could on, you know, you know, one foot by one foot platform and it would be called free range because there's a window. It doesn't mean that they can get up and walk around. It means, ah, oh, they can look out the window. Uh, and there's a lot of stuff like that. There's like, it's just, you're eating, you're not even eating a chicken at that point. You're eating a Frankenstein nightmare. Now, do you have to, because like with like sobriety and meditation and all this help mental health stuff, I have to keep doing it. I need a daily reprieve. I got to keep reminding myself of what it was like when I was drinking, how much better it is now, mm -hmm. what it's like when I meditate, what if I don't, if I exercise. Do you have to do that with food? Do you ever slip back into it? Do you have to like rewatch that movie? Because I would need that if I wanted to quit. I would yeah. keep going back to that movie, these books, in order for me to keep. Well, I think, and this, this is what I'll say, one of the positive things about social media. We can make, we can go around and say something positive about Instagram now. I follow a lot of animal sanctuaries. I follow a lot of vegan handles. And so you're scrolling through and a lot of it's like, I'm headline here, I'm headline here. And then you'll see like, boom, like an animal either being mistreated, which you don't want to see, but it reminds you. Right. It reminds you, do you want to be complicit? Do you want to, you know what I mean? Like, so there's ways to take in content to remind you that you want to stay on this path. And I also just, you know, I think about how many friends I have that eat meat or animal products and then still just they'll say stuff like, oh, man, I feel like shit. And they think it's just that's how you're supposed to feel after you eat. Right. I remember and, talking to Tim Young. Do you know Tim Young? I don't think I know Tim Young. Oh, he's a great guy. I should have him on. I mean, really great. But he talked about that with eating really well. He's a very, very healthy guy. He eats well and then fasts and exercises and meditates. He's like, people... Americans particularly have no concept of what it's like to really feel good. Absolutely. Feel as good as you're able to feel. He's right. And that's exactly it. People think I eat, I feel sluggish, I feel tired, but I don't question why I feel that way. I just go, oh, I just ate. But I find it so, I keep pushing back, we should move on, but I find it so difficult. I eat a sal I'll eat something really ha healthy, even meat removed. I'm like, I'll have a piece of salmon, asparagus, and a Caesar salad. And I am fucking starving an hour later. 
if I don't have uh, carbs, I don't know what to do with carbs. I, I like carbs, though. That's the thing. Is the, this thing against carbs is bizarre. Your body thrives on carbs. <laughs> right. I've You're, had this argument too. I'm like, carbs are good. They're carbs. good for you. you. just have to burn them off. Yeah, they're good for like, I mean, I'm not going to, I'm never going to turn my back on bread. No way. Right. Love bread. And this is what's so fascinating about food too, because other people will say all the stuff you're saying with just as much conviction about sugar and bread. Yeah. As far as health, not as the, the ethically, but they're like, sugar is this, it turns to that, it's going to kill you, the carbs and the thing, and you wouldn't have this if you didn't eat bread. So it, it's so fascinating because some people say this, about, I don't know who to believe with all this stuff. Yeah, I mean, that's, and you're right. There's, there's, there's passion on all, on all sides of it, right? But there's also science. Sure. And the science is out. I, th you know, like in terms of what, you know, cow's milk is made for a cow. Right. We're the only animal that drinks another animal. Yeah. Milk. And, you know, it's just so happens that like some people are still doing it. Like you just don't need to do it. Right. And that's just science. But like people, oh, no, milk. like, you know, we grew up in a time where we had those those commercials like milk it does a body good they would show like a sure, yeah. a little like bean pole kid getting pushed around like one day I'm, I'm gonna drink milk i'm gonna kick your ass yeah. so then he gets the milk mustache and then he's giving someone a swirly because he drank the milk but in all honesty we have the highest milk consumption in the world and we also have the highest osteoporosis so something's missing all right it's not adding it's not adding up right sorry it sounds like you're Inflection made something was gonna say more. No, I, I worked up. I feel bad because no, like cool everybody out. No, no, I'm not getting worked up. I'm happy to talk about this stuff. It's just I, I think I have a constant struggle with talking about this stuff because I mentioned earlier I don't want to seem pretentious. I don't want to be the vegan that's like you got, you know what I mean. Like do whatever you want to do. I just encourage people, encourage people to educate themselves about what they're putting in their body. And I'm, and you know, I'm not like you know, if I if you saw me naked, you'd be like it's not working. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like right. it's not. It, I'm not like some kind of fucking insane. But it worked. This is my problem. This is where I got to work on because you, I, you, I hear you're convinced me. I'm convinced over here. I'm convinced, McMahon. That's but, funny. But I would well watch what the health. And uh, I wish I see. This is another thing I need to get better at. I keep saying read the book, eating animals. It's the guy that wrote Everything's Illuminated, Jonathan. Yeah. I always want to say Jonathan Saffron. That's not his name. Hold on. I'm going to look it up because we're on a podcast. We have phones. Oh, it is Jonathan Saffron. I'm an asshole. Yeah, you nailed it. But it's, it's a guy, he's got a third part of it. Jonathan Saffron Fower. Fower. F-O-E-R. This was a tremendous book. What's it called again? Eating Animals. All right. I'll, I'll check it out. And, uh, but I can eat pasta. I can eat spaghetti. You can eat pasta. You can eat spaghetti. I mean, I eat a lot of pasta. Yeah, and right. and I what I do is uh, my favorite thing to make at home, pasta with a with the mushroom cream sauce. I hate mushrooms. Though. Oh well, that's a problem. Yeah, well I'll figure something else out. I'll go vegan. I'll go spaghetti and cheese. <laughs> that's not vegan. I mean, I'll go vegetarian. <laughs> I'll not go vegan. Vegan's crazy. That's all together nutty. It's it's that's funny you say that because nuts make cheese in the vegan world. Well, I'll make some nuts and whatever, but we got, we're getting too focused. On well, you you want to talk about the vegan stuff? I I big, well, this is gonna it turned into a. Vegan I almost thing. never want to talk about the vegan stuff because it's just something I do in my life, and I I don't want to. You're a good proponent of it, and that's important. Yeah, I know. Like the doing the the Joaquin Phoenix thing in the Oscars, I, I just everyone's like this fucking guy. What? I'm like, why? Because he's just being himself what's the problem well it also is the best thing you can do for the environment from what I well that's the thing so because that that's another thing that comes up with it. people go why are you do it is it the animals is it the health is it the environment and i'm like ding 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 all of them right yeah it's all it's all good i just am a fucking idiot it's hard but but i do uh meditate that's and i and i don't meditate so right, there you well, go like so one for me, <laughs> you should meditate you should get the waking up app with sam harris will change your whole fucking life i downloaded a meditation app headspace oh that, yeah i know about it and i did it for a day and then like i had a flight the next day and it was i was just and i never went back it's hard to change habits this is what we're talking about so we agree on that yeah habit forming is definitely important in adult life great book by judd brewer who was a past guest called unwinding anxiety 
it's, it's about anxiety, but it's also about just changing habits in general and how you can actually change habits. And it's amazing. It's about mindfulness. And that probably goes hand in hand. Does he mention like progress over perfection? Um, no, that's a sober thing that we talk about all the time. But yeah, I mean, begin again. I mean, that's the theme of my life and all these things. You just got to begin again. So if you eat meat or if you have a drink, whatever you're trying to quit or change, you can't just go, oh, I fucked up. I'm a piece of shit. You have to begin again. I like that. That's pretty good. So what do you want to get into other than vegan? Or is we, are we done here? i wrap up soonish. Okay. I thought you were great. Now I feel like you're in your head that this is... This- no, I, 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 I'm having fun and I like... And you can see how excited and passionate I get about it once I get going. I'm No, this has been great. Anytime I can get, get it out there that people should, you know, educate themselves about what they put in their body, I think is important. I'm going to try not to eat meat. Although I have Chick-fil-A in my head and I also have this thing where I want a reward. And it's also hard because with quitting drinking, you have, well, you have what you have left is food. And I quit soda because soda is so bad. Soda is terrible. I know. I, I don't drink soda. And the one time we went to the movies, when we saw that horrible film, White, yeah. White Boy Rick, and you're like, you don't have soda? And I was like, no, you're like, you don't need meat. You don't have soda. You're no fun. <laughs> and I was like, I'm all right. I'm a little fun. But I quit soda too. I told him to laugh so hard about someone said, you don't drink, you don't do drugs. <laughs> What you, you got, you do, you got nothing. You got, that's what they said. They said, no drugs, no drugs, no alcohol, no nothing. And I was like, well, I wouldn't say no nothing. That's a big leap. Yeah. And then Colin goes, yeah, maybe, I don't know. I have the laugh of a child. I have that. <laughs> um, like there are other joys. The ocean, I go in the ocean. There are so things. many joys. Yeah, yeah, you know, I have a niece that laughs at my farts. And my wife Farting in general. Trump's all. I love farts. We know this. Our whole friendship, our whole friendship is probably based on farts. Farts and Seinfeld. And overboard. Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell is an American treasure. Seinfeld, of course. Mm So I got to, I'll I'll work on it. I'll begin again. I forget what we were saying. Something. I'm going to try not to eat me. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Rewards. When I don't drink. So I do this podcast. I think this is a great episode and it feels good to knock something out. My mind, I want a treat now. Okay. I'll get a treat. I'll get a tea, a cookie. I, I'm compulsive. Well, you've already had a cookie today. I know. I can't I'm sorry. I, I spoil everybody. He had a cookie. I can't have another cookie. So you could. It's hard, but I have to do mindfulness. Meditation is a treat, all that stuff. And is it eight o'clock already? So you think Chick fil A is the reward, is what you're That's saying? That's a reward. Okay. But if I use Judd Brewer's thing of mindfulness, of like, I don't actually feel good after I eat this. No. And it releases a few dopamine on me, but salad, just, you don't get excited, but you get a good dressing. <laughs> it's all about that dressing. Well, you need something delicious. I mean, just eat leaves is just mm. not fun. I mean, come on. What are we talking about here? The this that little store we went into last night had they were selling uh pickled vegetables in the little packets and I got one of those pickled uh I don't know what the fuck it was snap peas pea snaps it was terrible but I was my only that was, that was one of those moments where I was like this is my only choice this or another bag of almonds I can't eat almonds all goddamn day yeah I was when I was trying to go keto I ate so many nuts I was shitting oil straight oil yeah or you just feel like your your shit looks like cashew butter yeah. <laughs> You're like, I got a toilet full of cashew butter over here. Well, this was really fun. Tell the people where they can find you. I am at no Wayne in hell on uh, Instagram. Also on Twitter, but I don't really use Twitter. We talk, I, I don't understand. It's not that I don't understand it. I just don't tweet. I don't care about tweeting. I, I feel like comedy is on the stage. And then, like, why? This is the world we live in. You have to do it. And this is my problem. I need to get better at it, I guess. It's frustrating, but yeah, I I tweet, I tweet when I have, this is one of the things Mark and I debate about. He tweets all day. He, that's part of his job. He sees it as like, I tweet four or five times a day. It's part of this thing. I have to have it out there. And I'm like, I tweet when I think of a tweet. That's the way. Nine days. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, oh, that's funny. I think I'll tweet that. And I think that's how I am with Instagram. I love Instagram, but I only am going to post something if I have something. I can't just be like, I have to do X amount of day. Which again is something that, like, if you're in the business, you should be doing. You got to do it. You got to get on TikTok. You got to do this. You got to do that. I'm not on TikTok. I hate TikTok. I tried for like 10 minutes. And I was like, this is the worst thing ever. I don't need more of these things. Um, but what about an album? You got an album? Why are you doing that? I don't have an album. This is another one of those things. Uh, one of my shortcomings. I don't have an album. I'd love to do an album. Uh, if anyone's listening and wants to. Do an album for me. This you should do. You should do that. No, this that I should do. material. You've been around forever. And also, the thing with an album is, 
you don't want to not have this record of you doing comedy. No, you're right. You're a life comedian. You're a hilarious comedian. You're one of my favorite comedians. Oh, thank you, Joe. You throw that up on a fucking... You're right. I want to do an album. That's my goal of now until it happens. I'm making an album. And it's an easier time than ever to do that. You know, you can get somebody... With- I think I got discouraged after being... I emailed one of those record companies that everyone uses in comedy and they never got back to me. And I was like, well, fuck these people. Yeah, fuck them. But I should have, I'm just going to just independently just make my own. Absolutely. And you make more money that way anyway. So I highly recommend it. Check out Matt Wayne. You're on YouTube. You got that one video on YouTube. Uh, there's, there's, the, there's YouTube videos, the Heckler videos from so long. I've been doing comedy for so long. It's like from like 2007. But, uh, you know, also I was in a film called Solo Project, which is on Amazon Prime that uh, my buddy directed, he wrote, wrote and directed it. And uh, we shot it in Copenhagen in 13 days. And it's such a fun little indie film. So I would encourage people to watch that. That was a lot of fun. I gotta check it out. I never watched it. I wanna watch it. I like it. Uh, well, thanks for doing the podcast, buddy. I thought this was great. And um, you probably pissed off a bunch of people who do this stuff. No, I mean, maybe, maybe if I can get one person to be like, what the hell? I'll, I'll watch this and see. Even if you watch what the hell and you go, I'm still gonna eat meat, at least you, educated yourself yeah i mean you inspired me i'm gonna try to eat healthy the rest i want you to keep me uh honest here maybe we'll go to panera but they got salads there uh all right right. thanks for having me joe yeah this was so much fun thanks a lot everybody mindful metal jacket is hosted by comedian joe list produced by joe list edited by matt kleinschmidt executive producers robert kelly and matt kleinschmidt for the Laugh Button Podcasts.